Hi and welcome to another Earth Science Classroom video. Uh, we're on earthquake unit videos and looking at rock deformation. And we're going to basically in this video discuss what deformation is. So the definition and we'll look at how rocks are deformed, how what happens to them, the different types of deformation and the different stages from basically a, a, a piece of rock uh, to a rock that eventually has a rupture or fracture in it and then has movement on either side because the stress is still applied and how this turns into earthquakes and the release of trapped uh, energy then released as seismic energy. So this is the video about that process, step-by-step -step process from rock in the crust to the creation of earthquakes. So you have your crustal rocks, right? Okay, so let's have your crust rocks. All right, so a big piece of crust uh, rock could be, uh, it could be granite. It could be basalt. It could be some andesite. Could be diorite. Could even be a burotite. Okay, so it could be any of these rocks. Could be as simple as limestone at the bottom of an ocean. All right, so we had this rock, this intact piece of rock. Now, as we know, deformation is the change of shape or size of that rock. Now, if you pick up a rock, say outside as a, a, a decent sized rock that you can pick up and you try to uh, change its shape you try and make it smaller or you try and stretch it or you try and um, mold it in a different way generally unless you're some sort of superhuman that you know or x-man or some marvel character generally the average human can't even make a dent into rocks. Rocks are extremely rigid, strong, natural structures based on the mineral uh, structure, the crystalline structure, the, the mineral grains, and how the elements and atoms are basically bonded together. That gives it strength. And we can measure this strength in different ways. But the average human can't uh, change a rock shape, can't deform the rock. However, if we put that rock so here's my rock again, all right? And here is the surface. Now, as we learned from the Earth's interior series, that as you take, let's say, rocks, let's put rock N, okay? As this rock N descends deeper into the Earth's interior, through the crust, into lithosphere, past the moho, down towards the xenosphere, generally, as we know, in terms of the geotherm, it gets hotter. But also, the pressure increases exponentially. So both the heat and the force that is applied to the rock increases as it gets deeper down. Now, what we should know to start with is the crustal rocks that are close to the surface, typically in the top 15 kilometers, basically. So let's do 15 kilometers, or around six or seven miles. The top part of the crust, mostly sedimentary, some igneous, maybe some metamorphic, but it's more brittle. Okay, now I'm going to just leave you with that because we're going to get on to what this word means and how we get there, but they are brittle. So as these rocks go down deeper, below 15 kilometers, they start to get less brittle and they start to have the pressure and the heat applied and then the rocks can be molded better. But also, we should know that the, the pressure and the force applied is really high deeper in the rocks. And that's very key to remember. So it can apply a lot of pressure to the rock, forcing it to be 
deform. Okay, we're back to our piece of crustal rock. Now, this arrow is going to show a process. Either you're going to add depth, you're going to add uh, force applied, or you're going to add some heat. But the next thing you do is you're going to have stress. Stress applied to the rock. Now, stress is force over a unit area. So it's basically, you know, if you were to want to unscrew a bottle top, right, you would have, you know, you couldn't do it a little bit of, you know, add more power into it and add more strength and twist it harder if you can't get it off. So stress is just the amount of force or energy applied to an area, okay? And then this stress is going to cause a thing called strain. Strain is the outcome. The outcome, what happens because of the stress. Okay? So the strain is the, the, the physical characteristic change because of the stress on the rock. We'll get that later on. And then the strain, the strain, let's do a little whoop. There we go. Around here. The strain is going to create deformation. So there's deformation, there is a change in shape or size of that rock because of the stress and strain, and we call this deformation. So we've changed the shape or the size of the rock in question. Okay. So now we're here. All right, so let's go back to what's next. How do we actually get to earthquakes? Well, the deformation is going to, you know, if you keep adding the stress, and you keep adding the strain, and there is a consistent environment where this is occurring on the rock, that deformation will actually uh, create what's called a rupture. Rupture, or we know more commonly as a fracture. Okay, little parentheses, we know this as a break. So if you unfortunately go and fracture a bone in your body, you go to the ER and you get the x-ray and the doctor says, oh, you've broken the bone or there's a lateral break or there's a compound fracture. Basically, you've broken your bone and it's very painful and you've got to get it and let it heal and have a, have a cast and all that good stuff and people sign it. It's all good. But in terms of rocks, this is what we want to create earthquakes. So the rupture of fracture is going to cause there to be a break in the rock and then with the movement don't forget, we still have consistent stress and strain. We have movement and around the fracture, and we call this a fault. And we call this a fault line, is the location of the fault within the rock, which is a fracture, which is caused by deformation, which is a consequence of stress and strain on that piece of rock near the crust or in the crust. Okay, so this video is going to look, look at different parts in more detail, but this is the flow chart that we have to understand and come back to. All right, so we're going to look at the, the different parts of that flow chart in more detail now. So looking at stress, the first thing is stress. And stress is the force applied to a rock uh, per unit area. So it's basically how much energy and force you're applying to a rock and over a certain given area. Obviously, the same stress, large area is reduced. Same stress, same force, but smaller area, then it's, it's an increased uh, amount of stress. So, also the key is it can occur from different directions. And that's where we get the different types of stress. Now, so the first type of stress, okay, is where we have a nice little crustal rock, okay. All right, and we have the stress, which I'll do in red. The stress. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to put one, some arrows here and here. Imagine arrows all over the place. All right. Ah, all right, that's a bad arrow, but we'll, we'll make, it, make it happen. So here's our rock. This 
is where the stress is being applied in all directions. Okay, so applied in all directions. As you can imagine, the movement is limited if the pressure is equal from all areas. So the movement is limited at best. Okay, and this is called confining. Confining stress. Think, you know, if you're in a you know small room and you're locked in, you're confined to that area. Okay, so confined stress is all around. Okay. Next one we're gonna look at is I'm draw my same box. There we go. I know my artistic uh, skill is amazing. We're gonna do this. We're gonna just do one here and one here. So two simple forces uh, going towards each other. And we call this compressional. Compressional, as in compression, as in to squeeze, as in to squeeze. So confine and compressional. All right. All right. Next one is where we have the arrows showing the stress is being applied on that rock in opposite directions. It's being stretched, all right? And it's being pulled apart. So anyone that you want to um, use as analogy or a metaphor or something to remember by uh, is fine by me. But remember, this is called tensional. Tensional stress. Okay, so confining, we had um, compressional, and now we have tensional, okay, which is opposite of compressional, obviously, being applied to that rock. So the last type of stress I want to stress to you <laughs> is this one where the forces are basically going against each other. Now, there is different areas. So this part of the rock down here, is being pushed or force applied to the left, and up here, the force is being applied to the to the right. So, what's going to happen is then over time, with consistent force applied in these different these different directions on this singular this rock layer, this rock um, area, what's going to happen is this little arrow for time is you'll get this happen. Where it will be deformed in this kind of shape. And this is called shearing. And it's called shear stress. All right. So you have this, this, this adjusted shape, this definitive shape, where you have this slanted rock caused by the opposing forces applied over a certain time. Shear stress of so shear tensional, compressional, and confining, the four main types of stress applied to a rock when it's underground. All right, so the next thing in our, in our chain of process is the strain. It is the effect of the stress on the rock. It's what happens when you apply stress to the rock, and also based down here on temporal differences, so time. So of a long time or, sh or a short time, and also it's based on the rock type as well. Certain rocks uh, will be will have certain amounts of strain quicker or slower based on the stress. So again, if we had a rock that was confining, then there wouldn't be much change to it. So the confining strain will just be the same um, dimensions. Okay, there isn't too much change of shape or size. Maybe a small amount. But as long as that uh, stress is, is consistent, then the shape remains the same. However, if we have a compressional, um, compressional uh, stress, then we're going to have this kind of like squeezed in, squeezed in kind of rock, like, like an apple core type thing once you've eaten all the apple. All right, so it's going to pushed in and squeezed, and you're going to have this, this uh, squeezed rock, okay, with compressional.
So I'm going to put confine in and compressional. All right, so the next one will be tensional. So basically, you have this rock that was like this. Okay, now you've got the rock that looks like this. It's being stretched and pulled like you would any kind of like Play Doh or spaghetti. So it's being stretched and you have the force applied like this. This is tensional. There we go. And I saw you, I, sh I saw you, I showed you earlier again the effect of shearing or shear stress on a rock, which would be this slanted rock that is deformed in this angle, this angle way. So it would be normally like upwards like this, but it's been moved according to the stress like that. So again, this is the strain, just the effect of the stress. And then we can look at, basically this is the effect and it's what we call deformation. So this rock has been deformed. There's a change of shape. And or size. All right, guys, I'm going to get on to the rupture or the continued level of deformation. Deformation has different levels of it. So I'm going to get on to that in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please uh, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and uh, leave a comment. It'd be great. And look forward to seeing you in the next video looking at deformation.